Hello everybody, this is the Retro Bear back once again in the gaming pantry. Thank you very much indeed for your company for today with what which will be a very special episode. Uh, four score and 20 years ago, which seems like it anyway, uh, back in the year 2018, I decided to do my very first collection video on this channel, which, let's be honest with you, nobody watched. Can't help that, but there we go. Um, and it was, as in true Retro Bear fashion, um, a video which was part of a series of about eight, uh, highlighting my Commodore 64 collection, which at that time was the biggest collection I have in my collection, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, and just to make sure you know what you're watching, you are watching Retro Bear. So you know exactly what's coming. You know exactly what's coming. There's going to be a pile of games to show off. Anyway, going back to 2018, when I was a lot younger, a lot slimmer, uh, had more hair, I'd like to say more attractive but I don't know. Anyway, you'll probably see some footage on the screen now which will give you an idea of just how much I have changed and indeed how much the gaming pantry has changed because behind me at that time wasn't the, the Wii stuff, that was possibly over there. It may indeed be up there, I don't know, it might have been over there actually. Uh, and this was probably been PlayStation 2 and tapes behind me so it's pantry's changed an awful lot since then. So I was thinking the other day, I thought, you know what? I thought, wouldn't it be fun to sort of watch that video back again? Because it was quite a, you know, it was a video I thought uh, I would do quite well. Because it was about the Hit Squad. Now, as soon as I mentioned Hit Squad, that immediately sets off so many different sort of alarm bells for so many different people. Because Hit Squad videos, uh, videos Hit Squad games are quite desirable. And I remember them from way back then. And even back then in 2018, I thought this video should do well because it's going to have Hit Squad games in it. And it didn't do very well at all. So we got the Commodore 64 t shirt on today. So we're going to do that video again. But now, not just sort of simply showing you the other video. I mean, you want us to watch the other video, it's there in the archives but I know very very few people go back and watch something like that so this is very very important to sort of do this now and hopefully um, bring it up to date I'm not going to do this with every single video I've done in the past because that's stupid okay um, but this one I felt deserved to be resurrected but not actually just sort of simply me revoicing it or you know sort of talking over it or what have you I've got the games here in that hit squad collection so I'm going to go through them one by one now there aren't that many. Now I should also say I ain't a hit squad, um, you know, chaser. I don't chase after these games. The majority of these I would have got. I think probably, probably would have got about ten years ago. And to be fair, I haven't added any since then because uh, one, they're so hard to track down. Two, I've got quite a few. And three, the ones I don't have are likely to be the more expensive ones. I'm not really interested in chasing hit squads i'm not bothered about it at all like, like some people are fair play to you if you do i i appreciate that and i admire that fact and when hit squad came out it was like wow this is great hit squad um because it was the ocean budget label they put all your old favorite games on there so it was massively successful so i, I understand why it attracts and appeals to so many different people but hopefully this one will do a bit better than the last one did i don't think the last one even got 100 views yet been there three years i think only two people commented on it i think they were 12 months apart and one year after the video went up mr bads and retro kid i think he was who commented on those videos anyway look back then i was just churning that content for the sake of it a lot of things i've got a lot better um i'll let you judge that one if you wish to do so go back and watch the original video there will be uh, a link in the description below just in case you want to go back in there if you can't be asked to click on the link uh, it's in the archives under collections, I think, something like that, anyway. Right, um, yeah, so, shall we get cracking? Right, now, these, these are in no particular order, okay? I just, sorry, I just haven't got time to do that today. Um, but I would say probably, looking at this here, 3, 6, 3, it's probably about 30, I would say probably about 30, 35. So I'll try and, try and whiz through them. Uh, a lot of these games I will remember. A lot of them I probably won't. Um, so let's start off, shall we? Shall we start off with the first one I've got? So we've got Power Drift. I only remember Power Drift. Now, Power Drift, for those of you who don't remember, 
um, was a sort of arcadey racing game with sort of like dune buggy type cars and some really weird and wacky tracks in the arcade when i played it on the amiga this was the first time i played it uh, it was very sort of uh, it wasn't the greatest conversion in the world it was quite confusing in places the 64 version is much more stripped down but it's much more playable um do i need to show you the fact it's got a tape inside probably it's a tape inside look I'll show you the back of the box as well try and get as close as we can to those i'll put it in front of my head does that sort of help focus it a bit maybe I don't know. I should probably try and do it like that, actually. Just get my fingers out of the way or something. Anyway, there we go. So, Power Drift. There we go. For those of you who are counting, that's um, number 40 on the arcade. Now, again, I've got no idea. I'm not even bothered. I don't even bother reading those numbers out. I've got no idea if these particular ones are rare or collectible. I just picked these up in a couple of three bundles. I was just lucky that they were in there to have them. Uh, there's a gameplay footage going back years and years on my channel for this game. I know some people will be... Uh, falling over their chairs, delighted to see this on it. Wonder Boy from Sega. I'm not particularly massive fan of Wonder Boy. And I do so by dropping that tape on the floor over there, which is just out there, each good grief. It wouldn't be my channel if I didn't drop something, would it, really? No, not a massive fan of Wonder Boy at all, in the slightest. There we go. Uh, I don't think this is a particularly great conversion either, to be fair. So, um, it didn't get very good reviews, I remember seeing at the time. I remember reading Zap Magazine. It was like, not a great review at all. Um, Platoon, which is based on the film of the same name. In space, no one can hear you scream. No, that was Aliens, wasn't it? Oh, the first casualty of war is innocence. There we go. It was the other one. Not a big fan of this one either, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's a bad game. I think it's just a bit fiddly. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's, it's quite commonly available. Now, a bit of a classic, this one. Um, one of my favourite games of all time. Again, played it on the Amiga first of all, but this is my... My mate had it on... Um, the Commodore 64. I'm not sure whether this is his copy or not, because he did give me some before he went to Australia, so I can't quite remember. Uh, this is Bubble Bobble, which, as you can see, has got a WH Smith price tag on the front, which says 3 99 Is that how much they were back then? I thought they were cheaper than that. I thought they were 2 99 hit squads. Maybe they were 3 99 I don't know. Anyway, and this is a, a cracking conversion. I don't think it's a fully complete conversion. I think there might be some levels missing out of it from memory. But, I mean, two-player action, absolute quality. You can't get any better than that, really. And uh, I don't think there was a bad conversion of Bubble Bobble. Some of them might have been a little bit slower, but I don't... Well, the, that's any Amiga one wasn't great. It seemed a bit... Whether it was original source material, I don't know, it seemed a bit basic compared to that one. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, this is a, a one which probably passed a few people by. This is Tubin. Now, I remember when it came out and everyone sort of like said it's a conversion of a relatively unknown and unremarkable arcade game. Now, I had this on the Amiga, and I thought it was brilliant. Really, really good fun. Um, Code Bastards did a version with Dizzy in it called Dizzy Down the Rapids. It's a great title for a game, but it's absolutely shocking. Uh, but this is really good to... If you've actually got two of you playing, it's really good fun. It's bright, it's colourful. Um, I can't remember the original arcade. Domark did the original um, conversions to the home machine so a home machine so this is obviously a non-ocean game on an ocean label uh, as was bubble bobble because that was firebird so um, i'm not going to bring it out and of course i'm not going to show every single one and say oh yeah um also power drift and wonder boy were actually uh, activision conversions i'm not going to do all that because that's just silly but uh, it wasn't just ocean games on there it was other games they brought in so activision certainly was one of the big ones i remember afterburner being on there as well um and Domark, because I've got I can see there's another Domark game here I'm gonna look at in a minute. So I say in a minute. Uh, those shouldn't be in there because they aren't hit squad games. Uh, here we go. Now this one is in a non-correct case, which I shall be correcting at some point very, very soon. Uh, this is Target Renegade, which was a home version sequel only to a successful arcade game, which was converted successfully to the home systems. That makes any sense. It's in one of these black cases, so it's definitely not the right one. So I'll just try and show you the back of that. There we go. But yeah, cracking beat up that one. 
Um, I was that Imagine who converted the first one? I can't remember, but it was, it was so successful that they actually just did a home version, and then the lease said about Renegade 3, the better. If you don't know about Renegade 3, go and look it up. And another W. H. Smith sticker on the front of this one. This is Rastam, which I always get confused with Rygar. But now I've got Rygar, I can now not confuse the two of them. I seem to think Rygar is this game rather than Rastam being Rygar, if you sort of follow me. Um, I don't know, my friend had this one years and years ago. Um, he just seemed a rather unremarkable sort of side-scrolling, um, you know, sort of barbarian hack slash type thing with some monsters in it. Seemed a bit unremarkable at the time. I could, of course, be wrong, and it could be an absolute belting classic. But you just, you know, just certain things just don't work for you. Uh, this one I really enjoyed. Uh, and this is a ten-gen game, which again was converted by uh, converted by Domark. And this I think was a, a futuristic follow-up to Super Sprint. This is Badlands. Uh, in fact, I think you had Super Sprint, Championship Sprint, Indie Heat, and then this one, which was sort of the very much same sort of thing, top-down racer, uh, small cars, and you could pick up weapons in this one. You can see there from the track layout. But I had a lot of fun with this one. And again, I played it on sort of the 64 and the Amiga, and it was uh, I thought it wasn't too bad at all, actually. Well worth a pop, that one. So, Badlands. Now, this one this one here, I mean, what a game this was in the arcade. This is Enduro Racer. Now, it's probably got the world's cheapest looking uh, cover. And that's what's in your photograph with the logo of the game put on it. I, mean, I, I remember seeing that in the arcade. Giant, sort of, uh, back in the 80s, sort of sit-down motorcycle type thing, dirt bike. Great stuff. Um, obviously, it was going to suffer a little bit. Um, when it got converted to the home system, same reason uh, hang, the Super Hang On did as well. But this conversion on the Commodore 64 is absolute dross, it really is. There is a video on my channel, going back years, gameplay, you'll see how bad it is. The music is great, but it goes to show just how bad the Commodore 64 was at doing racing games. And it wasn't great. That's my phone. <laughs> what the? Who's buzzing me now? Looking at videos. I have no idea what that is. Right, not important. It's been a long time since we've been interrupted by the phone, though. Well, it's nice to see that's still working, and my phone still works. Not anybody ever called me on it. Uh, right, so that's the first lot. Let's move on to the next. Right, I may have more than these than I thought I had. About 30, yeah, about 30. What have we got there? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's about 33, 34. So I think it's about a third of the original collection. Which, I don't know, suits me. Uh, next up on the world's most difficult games ever Green Beret. That I've never played Green Brave before. That'll make you cry into your soup at night. It's notoriously difficult. I've played it on the NES. I've played it on the Commodore 64. I've now got the Spectrum version, I think. Or, or will have the Spectrum version shortly. Um, and, and that's equally as difficult. So, um, yeah, not a great game. Not a great. Well, they say they say it's not a great game. It's a good game, but my goodness me, do you need to put have some patience to play that game? It is it is really really difficult, really really difficult. Um, this is Rampage, which again there's some gameplay footage on my channel as well. Um, it's all. It, I, I like Rampage. I mean, I've got Rampage on the, the Spectrum. I've got it on the Master System, um, and obviously now I've got it on the Commodore 64. Uh, it's a fair conversion. Uh, I don't think it sort of sets the world alight in terms of how good it is. It's, it's fairly competent. I mean, again, a lot of these conversions will sort of be boiled down to what you got out of the original game. If the original game was was, was a, a a good game, regardless of how good the conversion should be, that should always be retained. Uh, some of these don't have that. So if you like the Rampage game, then then it's a fairly competent conversion. But it's nothing. You know, nothing sets the world alight. Now I quite like this game um, because it's got a fun little boppy little soundtrack to go with it, and it, it's, it's not too bad. Um, it's donkey's years old as well. Uh, this is Shaolin's Road, which you can possibly always get confused for Yar Kung Fu, but that's, that's why I always get confused between this one and Yar Kung Fu again. Completely different games, um, but it's sort of like a, um, a sort of multi multi platform jump up and down and, and beat people up type of thing. And it's quite good, actually. And again, there is some gameplay footage on my channel. I may even stick the links in the description below. Some of my most watched videos. I mean, I have been there 10 years, granted, nearly. Could be 10 years soon. 
be 10 years in April since some of those videos have been up. But they are, you know, to give you no idea what they are. Um, I didn't think I had this one until I've just looked at it. But I have. Does that make any sense? Um, I have pressed, yes, I pressed record. <laughs> Sorry, yes, yes. Uh, this is Arkanoid. Wow. Now, this, this was... This was a reinvention of the old breakout game. Remember the, the, the rows of blocks, coloured blocks, and you had to use the, the bat and the ball to knock them down. Well, this is a, basically the reinvention, reinvention of that, putting it in like a futuristic space setting and giving you lots of power-ups to collect as well. And honestly, it's really, really good fun. Uh, it's a bit tricky uh, with the joystick. You have to get used to it. It can be a bit on the twitchy side. Um, but yeah, it sequel as well, Arkanoid 2, Revenge of Doe before Doe became part of the English language for other reasons. And it's really good fun. I, I would seriously recommend you sort of dig that one out because it is worth uh, worth picking up. Again, another one with some gameplay on my channel. I'm not doing this to deliberately boost my video ratings, by the way. It does seem like it, but it's not, honestly. I can guarantee you that. Uh, this one, it's... I never played, never no, didn't know anything about the arcade game. All I know that the uh, home conversions, well, this one in particular... Uh, was pretty terrible but there is a version of this on the master system and i'm desperately trying to try and want to try and track that one down this is quartet which i think was a four player game in the arcade one of the very very few first first sort of examples of that is gauntlet and there was this one you know we talked about turtles years later and x-men and spider-man versus x-men all that uh, so i'm x-men but this was the very first sort of four player game i'm pretty sure of it um and it's not a great conversion on the commodore 64 let's be honest it's not great at all but actually it's not too bad um i say it's not too bad it's a bit easy but it's got great great soundtrack with it again a lot of these guys have great soundtracks some of these games are absolutely terrible but the soundtracks are really really good really really good ah now one of my favorites um this of course known in uh, other countries as a different type it's called life force in other countries but over here it was called salamander one of the great shoot 'em ups of the 1980s and a really hard game as well let's be honest with you it is not an easy game to play um i'm not a great shoot, shoot 'em up person but i do enjoy and do enjoy them i keep going uh there's none of this sort of like frustration though depends on like r type on the pc engine um, or indeed playing that or uh, darius um yeah i'm, I'm complete on nemesis i'm completely useless at them but i keep going i will keep going keep going i'll keep, keep getting a little further each time so I sort of count that as progression. But yeah, when I first got Commodore 64, when the first games I, I got in the bundle, I picked out and played with Salamander. There we go. What happens? Uh, another dome market conversion. This is of a, of a rickety old cheesy arcade game. Uh, they did all the, the Star Wars... Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell you what it is now. Uh, all, the old, all the old Star Wars machines, so they did the Vector Graphics Star Wars, the Vector Graphics Empire Strikes Back, and then they did Return of the Jedi. Now, with Return of the Jedi, Atari went in a completely different direction, uh, moved away from the Vector Graphics and made him all sort of like a, an arcade stage platform, not so platformy, isometric sort of, and it just didn't work. Um, years and years ago, I don't know if anybody can remember, there was a magazine that came out for the Amiga and ST where they gave you a free game every month. And three months in a row, they did Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. And I picked up Star Wars on the Amiga, which was great fun. Because it got all the spe speech and from the film. Brilliant. Um, for some reason, I didn't get The Empire Strikes Back um, edition. But then I, I did get Return of the Jedi. And I remember being incredibly disappointed with how um, boring that game was. I used to finish it over and over again. Getting a little bit of speech in the film, but not a huge amount. And confusing on the last level, because you've got the first level, which is... Uh, the um, biker chase through the forest. Second level is when you're um, trying to remember now. Uh, oh yes, you, you, you've taken command of the Atat. Uh, sorry, it's, it's, it's command of the Scout Walker walking through the forest, and then keeps flicking between there and a battle in space. And then the third part is sort of flying the Millennium Falcon through the Death Star to shoot it. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it seemed a bit sort of. I can see what they were trying to do, but generally speaking, it wasn't great to be fair there are a lot better games than that one i think it scored mid 60s when it came out percentage wise that's about as good as it gets uh, here's another terrible game this on this system anyway stallone's cobra it should be cobra actually not stone um 
great game on on i think on the spectrum i think the spectrum widely gets white ray reviews this has got a belting soundtrack once again but another one of those games belting soundtrack crap game and again there is gameplay on my channel from this it really is atrocious it's a platformer um and it's just it just looks horrible it looks really really dated and nasty and and you know sort of like the lowest sort of thing you could produce from that era there are better games than that on the commodore 64 by a stretch it's just a terrible game really, really don't enjoy it really don't enjoy it uh, joystick waggling and it tells you on the front it's joystick only so if you have a joystick i suggest you make make sure you get it um thoroughly checked out first before you play this game this is daily thompson's decathlon uh, which will require you to grab hold of the joystick grab hold of your joystick vigorously and shake it around no i'm not being disgusting that's what these games are they are joystick wagglers this hyper sport super test olympic challenge track and field if you have a version you're paying it on you've got to waggle or wallop keys or punch buttons as furiously as possible um yeah responsible probably for the fact that quick shot kept going for so many years i don't know yeah you probably get a good workout on that i think if i play that now i'll probably have a heart attack to be fair um but yeah there's something <laughs> you have do you have do you have methods for waggling your joystick when you were younger um <laughs> before i get taken off the air by youtube what i mean is <laughs> was there a preferred method because most m most people i knew used to sort of like make sure you got a nice sort of flat surface you got the sucker pads underneath the joy pad joystick you stick it on the surface and then you'd go like that and you sort of like take it in turns to do it you know you do one event your mate would do another one sort of thing uh, or did you know some people and you see sort of like on the on the ones where you hadn't got the um rigidity say like the zip stick the zip stick pro if you had like a quick shot too some people just grab hold of the base and just waggle the joystick in the air like that so grab hold of the base and waggle it which i didn't wouldn't have done it much good to be honest with you i don't know but did you have a preferred method i don't know let me know the, the, i didn't i think my, well i did mine was just sort of put it on the on the the table hold it down and just shake vigorously what's a vigorous shaking going on there moving swiftly on trivial pursuit which has also got some a big crack in the case that shows up really well on that one uh, but also some more gameplay on my channel actually if you like quiz games this is the sort of thing you're going to play it's trivial pursuit i don't need to say you anything else other than that it is trivial pursuit from 35 years ago so obviously if you do like testing your brain it's probably a good idea to get a copy of that and see what the questions were like what current affairs was in 1986 87 when that came out uh, more stallone shenanigans this is rambo 3 which i think is a top down um i think it's a top top down sort of when you have to go into uh top down overlay maze type thing but also some 3d shooting sections and it was I think it was a similar thing on the, on the Mega Drive. The, the, the version I remember most of all is the Mega Drive because it came out as a launch title. I remember seeing it in, in the magazines, and you sort of see uh, this sort of like commando type uh, view top down, and then all of a sudden you you go to a 3D position where Rambo would come out with a gun and stand there, and his plane would come down. And you had to sort of shoot it down, and then you go, "Whoa!" I remember seeing that? Like, oh, that's fantastic. And this is not quite as good as that. <laughs> it's a bit tough game as well that one, but yeah um oh God. alter beast which happens to be one of my least favorite games on any system i don't know why um i think it's one of the, the said things to hate on alter beast because it was boxed in with the mega drive wasn't it when it came out but the, this just isn't i don't think it's a great game i don't think it's a great game to start with um you know, I know some people like it. The, the music in the arcade is really, really good. On the Mega Drive, it's 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 pretty good as well. But and this is a horrible, slow, clunky, skiddy version. It was done by Activision, which gives you an idea of how good that was because they were terrible at making games for the home systems. They had a horrible run in the late 80s. Big arcade games. I've shown you Power Drift, which on some systems was great, on some systems wasn't. I've shown you All to Beast. Uh, there's another one I hope I may have in here, which is called Afterburner. You never heard of Afterburner before. That was again an unconvertible game for the home systems. The only good version, home system version of Afterburner, was the Mega Drive one. Um, and that because the Mega Drive was probably in a better position to do something like that. I don't know. This is a really unsung game. 
and I think a lot of people forget about it. This is Cabal. Now, I really, really like this game. Uh, I apologise, actually, for the lack of lighting, because the direct sunlight, which was blinding me earlier, is now gone. So if it does appear a bit dark in here today, uh, I do apologise for that. That looks really washed out behind me. Why is that really washed out? I don't know. Everything sort of seems orange. Yeah, not quite, not quite as it should be. Anyway, I think it's because of the light in here today, so I apologise for that. Um. Anyway, yeah, Cabal. <laughs> Forgot what I was doing then. Cabal, really, really unsung arcade game. Um, you're sort of uh, basically sort of taking an over the uh, behind the um, soldier shot of sort of a 3D environment and sort of shooting enemies on different levels and bombing houses and clearing clearing levels. It's really, really good, and I, I think it got a you know um, people forget about that game. They really do. I'm probably not selling it very well, but I, I really like that. I, I think that is definitely a game that um, you should try and pick up if you get it. Like I said, came out on all the, all the home micros, all the 16-bit computers, but I don't think it ever made it to console. Bit of a shame, that one. Uh, this is based on a long-forgotten TV series, probably, thank goodness, as well. Uh, but I enjoy playing this on the Amiga. This is Run the Gauntlet which was sort of made me like an action uh, TV series with a series of teams taking part in driving all-terrain vehicles and um, sort of jet skis and things like that. Um, hosted by Martin Shaw, who used to be uh, one of the professionals on the TV. Not a professional on the television, one of the, the professionals. And Actually, I quite like playing this on the Amiga. It was really quite good. I don't think it stands up particularly well today from what I've read and heard, but... I will look forward to playing that one because I quite enjoy that. That should be red. Yeah, you can see there. Yeah, I think it's the angle of the television. Oh, God, there goes the sunlight. <laughs> Come back. Right, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. If you plunge into darkness, we know what it is. It's half past three in the afternoon. Well, four o'clock in the afternoon. Should be perfectly sunny now. Uh, this is Driller. Which is a Freescape 3D game. What's Freescape? I hear you are, uh, cry. Well, it, there, was a, there was a spate of games that came out. There was this one, and I always now tend to forget what they were called. This was called Freescape Driller and uh, other ones that I can't remember anyway. Um, but it, it was basically sort of uh, 3D polygon games, exp exploration games. And you'd have thought trying to put something like that on the Commodore 64 would be terrible. It, it runs painfully slowly. You'll, you'll honestly think time has stood still. Um, when you play this game but honestly it, it's quite easy to get into it and I, I remember playing it ages ago and I thought this is really quite good um, and it came out on the Spectrum as well as the Spectrum version pretty sure it was an Amstrad version I would guess but yeah and, and I thought yeah did it, actually if I sort of seriously sat down and played this properly that would be really good fun I'd, I'd probably get into it um, Sylvester Stallone once again this is Rambo First Blood Part 2 I'm not collecting specifically Sylvester Stallone games, but this is probably one of the oldest titles that came out for... Um, I mean, this, this was around years ago, wasn't it? Years. Everyone remembers Rambo on the Commodore 64. Everybody remembers Rambo. Uh, but I think this came out a few years... One of the early ones. So probably one of the early, early re-releases on the Hit Squad, I'm guessing. What number was it? Yeah, number one. Number one on the arcade, I'm guessing. No movie no one on the movie anyway it was an old game at the time it got re-released anyway last few now this one um i don't know much about this one this is slap fight other than i remember when i tried to play it it wouldn't load well it did load and then it just went into infinity it just carried on i started the game up and it just carried on going and carried on going i thought after about 20 minutes thought, this is a long first level so i'm hoping if i could try i've got five data cassettes so uh, it's not as if I'm going to be short of um, copies of the opportunity to play this with a different system. But yes, yeah, a slap fight. But it's a, it's a, a sort of uh, up the screen suitable rather than side scrolling. Ages old game. Ages old game. Right, what have we got here? Um, Puffy's Saga. And I'm past the age where I start laughing at that. Um, and it, I don't know, you, you sort of look at the front of it and you think, oh, that's sort of like action-adventure type thing. When you realise that your actual main character um, is a little round yellow ball which blows uh, 
can breathe fire at people. It's sort of like a gauntlet type game. You play gauntlet, uh, top down, dungeon moving round from uh, one point to another to escape the dungeon, move on to the next level. That's the same sort of thing. Um, I seem to think it's highly, quite well regarded. Who was behind that? Was it System 3? Who were behind that? Or was it Ubisoft? Possibly Ubisoft. I don't know. I don't know I said System. I think it's Ubisoft. Um, another unconvertible arcade game. And again, I think I've got some gameplay on my channel for this one. WEC Le Mans 24. Now, this was a rotating sort of uh, arcade machine which would spin round um, and give you the proper sort of racing experience. Now, on a system like the Commodore 64, it suffers terribly because it's not very good. On other systems, I believe the Spectrum version is particularly well um, uh, sort of regarded. Again, music is great. Game is terrible. I think he said a naughty word there. But, yeah, just not a great game for the Commodore 64. Was it a great game to start with? I don't know. I didn't play the arcade original. Uh, final few now. We're on to Predator, which I didn't like. And again, there's gameplay on my channel this one. I think it's just a bit dull. It's all... I just keep running from left to right and not a lot happens. It's very green and brown. Not not a fan, not a fan of Predator. This one is an absolute classic. I love this game, and again, I think it's one that people seem to forget about. Uh, this is Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters, which has probably got the longest title of these games. What a fantastic game this is! Again, isometric, even better fun with two players. You're going through levels trying to find the end of the level, and you encounter all these like '50s sort of style science fiction monsters. That's what it's based around. Um, I know some people don't like it and they say it's a bit, you know, not great and there are better examples. But honestly, the amount of fun that me and my mate used to have playing this on the 64 and the Amiga as well. I wish I had a copy on the Amiga. I had a copy copy. But I wish I were on the Amiga because I think it's quite expensive to pick up now. But, yeah, one of my favourite games, that one. Absolutely love that. And I think that's my mate's copy as well, after all these years. Um, three to go. Uh, Batman the Movie, which is one of my favourite games on the Amiga. Uh, I've never played it on the Commodore 64, um, so I will um, have a go at this at some point. I think what happened was I did try and play this one, but it wouldn't load. So um, I will have to keep playing around with the settings on that one. But that's a shame. I, I know that one is a bit of a, a strange copy. Having said that, I think um, I'm being sent one of those, a loose copy of Batman the movie. So it's always good to have a, you know, if you get off and always pick, try and find one you know you've got a duff copy of. Always worth keeping your eyes out for it. Uh, this is The Vindicator, which a game is I never heard of. I'm not even sure it's an arcade game. I've never even played it, so I, I don't know. Sorry, can't tell you much about that one. Actually, one of the few games I couldn't t can't tell you about in this collection. So I look at the front cover and I think, I'm, I'm not going to enjoy that. I don't know why. And then the last game, I mentioned uh, it earlier. Uh, in a completely unrelated instant and this is Renegade 3 now for those of you who don't know uh, the Super Renegade 1, 2 and 3 1 was an arcade original which got converted into very well 2 was a home exclusive original uh, which was absolutely brilliant and got raved about and this one was meant to be the follow up and he sort of set through a series of different time zones and the, go and, you can go look it up on the internet but the, the story behind this one is that a lot of people were paid a lot of money or given quite a few benefits for saying nice things about this game when it was absolutely the biggest steaming pile of dog poo that you could have come across. It really was not very good at all. Um, it completely... It, it, it sits so far outside the original two games which are focused on sort of like beating up thugs. This is going through time and beating up cavemen and dinosaurs and spacemen probably and... You know, it got a crash smash and a zap sizzler, but it's well documented that they were paid to say how good that game was. Right, before it gets any darker in here, God, you start this blazing sunlight. I had to close the curtain. If I had the curtains open, it probably would be better. But um, oh well, there we go. With hindsight, we just have to see. Uh, so yeah, so that's my hit squad collection on the Commodore 64. You can go and look compare it with the original video and see how that was and see what the style was like then and how bad I was 
and judge yourself if I've improved since then I don't know uh, but I hope you enjoyed that if you have enjoyed it don't forget to do that at the bottom which is sort of thingy there and uh, that would be really appreciated because it's always good to hear people's feedback uh, always good to uh, come across new people on the channel as well and uh, it'd be great to hear from you and if you've got any of those games or you can recommend any hit squad games please feel free to leave a comment below in the meantime this is the retro bear going to see if i can get batman the movie and slap fight to work properly um which will incur much cursing and throwing around of things in the front room until then we'll see you again very very soon when that time comes take care and bye for now